One of the most common complaints or things my students want to work on when I ask is shoulders. Shoulders have a tendency to carry a lot of attention. So today we're going to be working on shoulders, but I briefly want to discuss my three-part approach and it can work for any body parts and we'll do that in future videos. But the three-part approach for shoulders looks like stretching. Stretching feels good. It's going to get deep into the muscles, but on its own, it's not going to be enough. I like to add counterbalance. This is doing the opposite of repetitive movements. So again, using the shoulders as an example, our body's natural tendency is to sort of draw the shoulders forward. We see that when we're driving, when we're reading books, when we're looking at our phones, um, even hobbies like knitting, painting, this forward motion. So we counterbalance it by opening up the chest, drawing shoulders back. Then we also need to add an element of stability to strengthen the stabilizer muscles and add um, mobility, range of motion. So this three-part approach is going to work for most sore and achy spots today, focusing on the shoulders, barring any injuries. Um, there we have to talk about modifications and take a different approach. So let's get started with this three-part approach to shoulders. We'll begin in child's pose. So child's pose looks like your legs can be together or apart but you're sitting back on your heels, your forehead is down, your hands are reaching. So while this on the surface looks like a stretch in the shoulders, right? Because we're getting all this space between our blades, it is a bit of a counterbalance. We're bringing um, our chest towards the mat and our shoulders back into space. So it's a really nice light way to start countering Again, the day-to-day -day tendency to fold forward. So you want to give your body a few moments to adjust. It's a wonderful space to really connect. You're safe, you're grounded on the floor, so you can focus on relaxing your shoulders, on finding that bonus space. But also this gentle counter motion sort of bringing things back in stable. So focusing on breathing into the back of the shoulders, getting spacious in the back, and exhaling into the release, letting your body soften into this pose. So now inhale, float up into what we call our tabletop. And we want to be mindful here that we're connected in our thumb and index fingers so we're not putting pressure in the wrists. The fingertips of the middle, ring and pinky, are also plugged into the mat. The elbows are a bit soft. So on the inhale, we're going to lift our chin, our chest up, draw our shoulders back. This is our cow pose. You might have heard of cow and cat. We exhale arc our spines. So on top of this being just a wonderful warm-up to condition our spines for our practice, we play with, as we come into our cow, that counter. We're bringing our shoulders back, finding space in the front of the chest, counter to our day-to-day. -day. Exhaling, we get that stretch that we talked about. We're putting space between our shoulder blades. As we pull our belly button into our spine, exhale out. So inhaling lift, you know, on top of this warming up our spine, we are sort of expanding and contracting and we're bringing, we're bringing blood to this area. We're bringing movement to this area. So let's take one more round, really focusing on a nice mindful lifting inhale, a long released exhale we come to neutral. Really simple pose, we call it our threaded needle. You inhale your right arm up, a nice big stretch, and you dive it down. Coming on to your right shoulder, your right temple. Now we are in the stretch portion again. So sometimes when we are sore and achy in our shoulders, um, we might think, oh, I, I have knots, and you might. But you might also be overstretched. 
So acknowledging how this feels, it's great because it gives us a little warm up in our neck. It gets behind our shoulder blades. But this might not be exactly what we need. This might be more in line with our warm up. You can reach your left arm out to the front and really kind of settle into your right hip to go a bit deeper. You can leave your left hand underneath for stability. And we'll ground our left hand in. We'll inhale right up. We'll stack our wrist on top of our shoulder. Maybe give our wrist a couple rolls out. And we'll drop our hand down. I like to put a cat cow in, just sort of rinse away the stretch so we're not holding as we go to the opposite side, bring it to neutral. So same thing on the left, we're inhaling our hand up, taking a nice big reach. We're exhaling, threading our needle, coming on to our left shoulder, our left temple down. So we're just checking in, we're warming up our shoulders, we're getting that stretch behind the blade. So if you do have some tightness there, we're getting this wonderful release. It might feel really good. But again, space between the shoulder blades, our day-to-day, -day, has a tendency to overstretch this place. We'll continue to talk about that. Right now, we're just exhaling, getting a little space in our neck, really preparing for the work we're going to do on our mat. Then we inhale our left hand up, take a nice big reach, a nice little counter. And we might give our wrist just a few rolls. And we'll plant our hand. Take that cat cow rinse, sort of resetting the spine, resetting the shoulders. We'll bring it to neutral. And here's one of my favorite counterbalance poses. Hips stay over knees. It's very similar to our child's pose, but we bring our hands forward. We take our forehead to the mat if this pose is very new to us. Or if we're still sort of warming up in our bodies. Someday, one day, maybe even today, your chin might come to the mat. So this is bringing our chest forward, our shoulders back. This is a wonderful, as I said, counterbalance to our day today. The opposite motion is just great for our posture. It gently contracts behind the shoulders, so it's kind of acting as a massage. And it opens up the front where we might get a little congested or things might get a little short when our shoulders are folded in day to day. Then we walk our hands up, back to our nice neutral table. We of course like to rinse things away with our little counter. So since we just came from a big stretch, let's start with exhaling a cat. And there's a real counter pose. Inhaling to cow. We'll take one more set, sort of rinsing away the stretch. And now we're just going to head onto prone, onto our bellies. If you are accommodating your chest, you might want to take a pillow, a blanket, a towel, roll it up, put it under your rib cage for a little bonus support. And here's where we get into that stability exercise. So I like to press the tops of my feet down just like I would in a yoga cobra pose, kind of engaged into the tops of the feet. Arms are by the sides, forehead is down. Now you can choose to lift up your head. But you got to be mindful that you're keeping neck in line with spine, and it could at some point feel straining. That's why it never hurts to keep your head on the floor. Then we're going to float our arms out to the front, making a nice Y shape. We're going to inhale, pick up our hands, exhale them back down. You're feeling your middle trapezius engaged. This is the part of the shoulders that tends to get overstretched in our day to day. So we're exhaling down. Inhaling up and we're creating stability in this often overstretched muscle. We'll take just a couple more rounds of lifting and lowering. All right, the next time you inhale up, hold it, hold it. You might even feel a little heat, a little shake, and that's not a bad thing. 
We'll drop our hands down. Bring our palms under our shoulders. Come up to our table. How does your lower back feel? Rinse things out. One more set. And we'll bring it back to neutral. So another really fun stabilizing exercise. We'll reach our right hand out in front. We look for uh, an engaged core, which is supportive to our spine. And we'll take our hand, we'll bring it right around our ear. And we're just going to inhale our elbow up. And exhale it back down. You can turn into it a little bit. You can focus just on lifting the arm. But feel all that wonderful stability behind your shoulder blade. Really strong. Keep your left elbow soft. Now we're working on range of motion. We're working on stabilizing our overstretched trapezius. We'll take one more lift. We'll place our hand back down. We'll take our wonderful cat-cow rinse. We'll bring things to neutral. Left arm reaches. We look for the stability. We engage our core. We get used to sort of engaging that middle trapezius right around our shoulder blades. Our, left, our right elbow is soft. We'll bend. We'll place our hand right at the side of our head, right around the ear, and we'll inhale, lift. Exhale down. We want to create that heat. That's how we know we are strengthening and stabilizing our shoulder. But that heat can be wonderfully healing. It can get even deeper than just a stretch itself. And we'll take one more. We'll place our hand down. We'll rinse things out with a cat and cow. So we stretched. We counterbalanced. We stabilized. Let's turn on to our seat. So now we're in our shoulders, or we've been in our shoulders. We'll sit up nice and tall. The very top of the trapezius, we tend to be overstretched in the lower. The very top tends to get a little tight. So we'll just check in with our shoulders, give them a few rolls into space, both forward and backwards. And we'll just simply take right ear to left shoulder. We'll get into that tight part of the trap that tightens up. You can add your left hand a little weight, reaching right hand out. You can just reach the right hand without using the left if it feels like too much pressure. It could go completely hands-free. But inhaling a good lift in the spine and exhaling to settle into your seat. Don't forget to engage your core so your lower back isn't arcing. And then we'll inhale our head up. Rinse through our shoulders. Right ear, right shoulder, space in the left side of the neck, that very top part of the trap that we said gets tight. Left hand could walk out for a little bonus stretch. Right hand could hold temple if it deepens the pose in a safe, place, uh, safe way for you. You most certainly don't have to take it this way. We come to center. Lift our head up, rinse things out. So we tuck chin into our chest, put our neck in full flexion. So there we have it again. Here's our stretch. Again, when we look down at our, at our things, at our phones, um, just our natural tendency as we're you know, driving or walking, this is very much in line with the stretch. That isn't to say it won't feel good for your body. But then we inhale up, we take a moment to adjust, and then we pick up our chin. Here's our counter. How often do you look to your ceiling? Roll your shoulders up to your ears, drop your arms by your sides, really lengthen out in the flexors of your neck. And we'll bring it to center. So there's our three-part approach to shoulder pain. Stretch, counterbalance, stability, mobility. Check back in. I will keep making videos that deal with the shoulders, the neck, common places using this three-point approach.